can I hear you all? Okay, well, I'll, I'll uh, um, yeah, my name is Scott Nanian, um, and I apologize. I am just down the road, but not feeling well today. So I am um, sparing you my, my physical presence, but I do wish I could be with you all there today. Um, I am uh, Scott Nanian. I work on the Content Transform team at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, we deal with Wikitext. Um, we're going to be talking about a component called Parzoid today, which we've been working on since 2012, and more broadly about Wikitext, the markup language underneath all articles on our wikis. Uh, so this talk will be in three parts. I'll start by defining some terms and explaining what Parzoid is, how it relates to Wikitext, and how you can test Parzoid on your home wikis. Um, then we'll talk about how to handle changes in Wikitext, surveying some of the tools available to migrate content and fix Wikitext errors. And then finally, we'll talk about the road ahead, what changes are coming, what we're excited about, and what we might dream of for the future. We'll start with Parzoid and Wikitext and begin by defining some terms. So Wikitext is the markup language used to write articles on MediaWiki wikis. What the browser actually displays on the page is HTML. The parser is the component that turns one into the, into the other, turns the wiki text that you write when you write an article into HTML that the browser can display. And Parzoid is the new parser we've been working on since 2012. The original driver for Parzoid's creation was Visual Editor, which was a new way at the time to edit MediaWiki articles. Visually, the text on the left is what an editor sees when they're writing an article directly in Wikitext, and the parser, Parzoid in this case, generates the HTML on the right, which is given to the browser. Without getting too far into the weeds, note that Parzoid is generating invisible tags in the HTML like this. Uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor, but this meta tag here um, for indicating the position of the table of contents. This preserves information from the original wiki text. The information carried by these invisible tags can be useful for editors or gadgets or tools. And this is the main feature of Parzoid compared to the old parser. It preserves all the information from the original wiki text, including template boundaries, comments, and other invisible metadata and markup. This enables round trip conversion from Wikitext to HTML and then back to Wikitext, allowing us to edit Wikitext with a what you see is what you get HTML editor. But in the process, we've also by necessity had to grapple with the wild and woolly nature of Wikitext, documenting and standardizing it and often cleaning up its rough edges. So these are the sorts of questions that Parzoid allows us to answer. Where is this coming from? It allows us to match up the HTML in your browser and the original wiki text so that if you were to point at an item on your browser page, we can tell exactly where in the wiki text that thing came from. Uh, what is it? By preserving information about template boundaries and arguments and other invisible, invisible features of the wiki text, Parzoid can also provide additional meaning for the things you see. For example, this bit of HTML is an info box. How do I write this in wiki text? Parzoid's motto is we deal with wiki text so that you don't have to. Parzoid generates a stable intermediate representation, which is easier for tools and humans, in the case of visual editor, to write, and then takes care of all the gnarly details of how to not just properly write this as Wikitext, but also elegantly write this as Wikitext. It turns out that our editors have a keen grasp of style in the Wikitext they like to author on the projects, and Parzoid is careful to generate Wikitext that fits in, that matches the way that human editors format their Wikitext, which varies on different projects. Wouldn't it be nice if Wikitext would let me write this more easily or if I could mark up this in some way? Uh, our ultimate goal with Parzoid is to enable new Wikitext features, and we're eager to hear from you all what those ought to be. Finally, why can't I edit this? Um, this isn't related to your permissions on Wiki per se, but there are certain templates on Wiki which are uneditable for technical reasons, usually because they are frequently used and thus every edit to them causes the repars of hundreds or thousands of other pages, and our servers can't take too much of that. The incremental rendering features we are exploring in Parzoid will help reduce the backend impact of edits to these frequently used templates, and that in turn may allow fewer of these to be fewer of these to be protected, and thus allow you to edit more. So, um, although we began Parzoid for use by editors, and its use has grown over time, Parzoid now powers content translation, flow, Wikimedia enterprise, discussion tools, Kiwix, and our mobile apps. But the HTML that desktop users see has still been generated by the old legacy parser. Maintaining multiple parsers is not sustainable, and we began the parser unification project to gradually replace all the uses of the legacy parser with Parzoid. In 2024, this year, we began to roll out Parzoid for read views to generate the HTML you see when you visit an ordinary article page to read it. So visually, on the left is visual editor, or what you see is what you get, article editor. That content has been generated from Parzoid from the start. 
and on the right is what a reader sees. This has been generated by the legacy parser and is now transitioning to Parsoid. So this is our first exciting announcement, which we'd like to, to spread widely. You can help us test Parsoid read views. The parser migration extension is installed on all WMF wikis, and third-party wikis can install it as well. And it allows per-user opt-in to use Parsoid for article views instead of the legacy parser. In most cases, we expect this to be super boring because the Parsoid output will look identical to the legacy parser output. I mean, 99% of pages are likely pixel by pixel identical. However, the point of doing the test and opting in early is to find the places where this isn't the case and get a head start on resolving compatibility issues. So this is what the preference added by um, the parser migration extension looks like. In your uh, editing uh, preferences, uh, if you scroll all the way down to developer tools, whoops, um, uh, you have a new, use the new Parsoid wiki text parser. Um, there are three settings, always to opt in, uh, never uh, opt out. If it's breaking up one of your workflows, we think it's very important that you can, you can opt out if you need to, to get work done on wiki. Um, and according to wiki configuration, the default. So um, it, there are also links to switch to and from Parsoid in the sidebar on individual pages. Um, I don't know if you can see them over here, um, but they're, they're over there. So um, the switch to wiki default is, is what we do when we say we are rolling out Parsoid for, um, for example, wiki voyage. Um, what we're doing is switching the default for people who haven't opted in or out to the setting um, to use Parsoid. Our decision to switch a wiki, um, wiki's default view is based on a confidence framework our team has developed. We have a pixel by pixel comparison tool to compare the output of the legacy parser and the new Parsoid parser, and we use quantitative data to guide our decisions. This approach not only boosts confidence in Parsoid deployment for read views, but also aligns with our commitment to a transparent uh, and data-informed process, ensuring the highest standards of deployment readiness and effectiveness. Um, as I mentioned, most play pages are pixel by pixel identical, but we do have a known issues page and we don't catch everything. In particular, user gadgets and dynamic behaviors aren't captured by our visual diff tool. So something that happens only when you mouse over a certain place on the page um, will generally uh, escape our notice. So what we need is for you as our friendly beta testers to try out Parsoid as, on a, as a daily driver and help us find the things that we don't already know about, as well as prioritize the things we do, do know about. Um, we also probably don't use all the gadgets which you use on Wiki. Um, so try your gadgets, see what works, see what doesn't. If this change is going to affect your workflow or the articles you watch, we want to know as soon as possible. And that leads us into the next section, migration tools. Some pages do look different on Parsoid than they did in the legacy parser, often because they use old or deprecated features of wiki text. How do we find them and what do we do about them? Let me tell you an ancient tale, a tale so old browsers were still using HTML4 and no two browsers displayed HTML in exactly the same way, especially if there was broken HTML on the page. There was this upstart called XHTML, which rose up to claim the correct browsers ought to just stop and display an error message on a blank screen if you forgot to close a tag. In those dark days, we introduced an HTML4-based library called Tidy to MediaWiki. Tidy's job was to ensure that MediaWiki's output was always correct to satisfy the XHTML upstarts and would always display the same way on every browser. When given broken HTML, it fixed it. There was no standard for how it should do this, so it made stuff up. And gradually, those fix-ups became part of Wikitext. Making a long story very short, after a long walk in the wilderness, eventually the same problem was solved in a different way by the uh, Web Standards Working Group and the HTML5 specification, which finally standardized exactly how broken markup was supposed to be repaired. Of course, that didn't line up with the idiosyncratic way that Tidy and thus Wikitext had always done things, and Tidy had lapsed out of maintenance upstream. Our editors started complaining about ways that Wikitext diverged from the HTML5 spec. This came to a head in 2015, and we began to undertake a transition. Our initial tests in 2016 show that 93% of pages were unaffected by the shift from HTML4 to HTML5, but that left 7% of all pages on Wiki, which needed to be fixed up somehow. And this process took three years. How did we manage it? Tools, community engagement, and a phased deployment. This is a very brief account of a longer story, which you can read at the, the URL down here. Um, the key here is that this process, although painful, unblocked new innovation in MediaWiki, starting with the template styles extension, but also as the first step in the parser unification work I mentioned earlier. We're going to talk about tools in the remainder, but let me pause here to underline that the community and an orderly process for incrementally rolling out changes were also key. 
We were incredibly happy to see the, the talk by user PMG yesterday about the five-year effort on Polish Wikipedia to completely eliminate linter errors on their wikis. Um, you can probably see that there uh, at that link if you missed it in person. And that is exactly the sort of work which helps us uh, progress in, um, in our project. So let's not lose sight of the point. The goal of content migration is to enable wiki text improvements. We can't move the platform forward if we're held back by um, the, the legacy of, of, of 20 years of, of um, uh, questionable choices, we'll say. Our goal is to facil facilitate fixing up old content in order to enable new features. So I'm going to quickly survey some of the tools that communities can use to help eliminate wiki text errors on their wikis. This is a speed run through a superset of user PMG's talk, which focused mostly on the linter extension. And the linter extension and tracking categories, these first two categories, are indeed the primary tools that any user can use on their home wiki to eliminate errors. Automated tools like AutoWiki Browser and the bot frameworks um, can be used in a, in a limited manner with appropriate process and permissions. And then there are other tools that we don't use on WMF wikis, but might be useful for you on other wikis or other projects you may have. First, tracking categories. Certain types of errors are marked with a tracking category, which show up on a special page listing those tracking categories with localized information about them. They are added with a special call to the parser method inside MediaWiki, but from that point on, they are just normal MediaWiki categories. Your editors or admins can click on the category, see all the pages in it, and methodically try to fix them up. One big limit, limitation here is that often the problematic markup is generated by a template, and you'll get a thousand pages added to a category because they all use a, sim, a single template which generates a bad markup. This can be hard to see, especially since the template itself might not end up in the category. Um, and the other thing I've noticed is that editors don't generally know when new tracking categories are added, and this page, the special tracking categories page, is not um, well monitored on most wikis. So in part to address the the um, template issue, the linter extension was created, originally as part of the HTML5 uh, migration part project I discussed earlier. It's not quite as simple to create a new lint. Um, this is what the code for the night mode lints look like. But in exchange for slightly more complicated implementation, it can provide much more precise information about the source of the error. And because the linter has access to the entire parse document, it allows you to write tests for errors which would be very hard to catch using the legacy parser. The linter extension displays categories of lints by priority on a special page. Um, PMG mentioned that Polish Wikipedia used a user script which displayed all this information in a nicer manner, and we'll have to follow up to make that more broadly available to folks. But if you click on a category here, you can get more information about the problem, and at the bottom, um, you see that we track the template which is causing the link. If you click on the edit link over here, uh, you are brought to the editor with the exact location of the problem highlighted for you. Again. I'm abbreviating a lot, but community participation is vital. I've shown the bare mechanics of the linter, but volunteers have created innumerable help pages. And as mentioned, there were additional user scripts created by PLWiki, which we should try to make more broadly available. OK, there are other tools. But now past this point, there are dragons. Uh, this is a map drawn by Fra Maro. He put the Isle of Dragons over here um, in the corner. A key challenge with these next tools is going to be how we rec reliably recognize the old markup we want to update. So here's a story from an old version of the game Dungeons and Dragons, which was published with numerous occurrences of the word the wizard in the core rulebook. Does anyone know what went wrong? I'll give you a hint. Here's what it looked like. This is a description of a cube of frost resistance. We have cold the wizard. We have 100 points of the wizard. And we have a device that can only withstand 42 points of the wizard. What's the wizard? What's going on? Well, another word for wizard in English is mage, which shares the same root as magic or magician. And the authors of this book apparently changed their mind at the last minute about whether they wanted to call their magic users mages or wizards and did an ill-advised global search and replace. So very similarly, the issue we always need to keep in mind for content migration, and the reason there are dragons here, is the need to accurately recognize the markup pattern we want to replace in the presence of templates, modules, and other advanced Wikitech techniques so that we don't risk creating the wizards when we use automated tools to fix up markup. So automated tools. I'm going to quickly run through five different tools that do automated or semi-automated edits to content, which could be used for mass content migration. I don't think Polish Wikipedia used AutoWiki browser at all, but PMG did notice, did mention that they had fellow editors use bots for some of their cleanups. Um, 
So Auto Wiki Browser is a semi-automated tool which looks like this. There is a huge amount of functionality here, carefully built to a purpose. Um, it very efficiently loads pages and queues up edits, um, but despite the automation, keeps the human editor in the loop for every change. Some folks find tooling like this helpful. Others find that you just they just want to load 100 page into, pages into tabs and do it themselves. Um, if you're using a fully automated uh, bot framework, we have a number of, of those. The oldest uh, started in about 2003 and most well established is something called PyWikiBot. Uh, and it has a large collection of existing user scripts for various common tasks. It's pretty easy to write new bots. This is a, a section that just adds some new text to a page. Most of the code here is actually option processing. Only these last two lines do the real work of the, of the bot. One disadvantage is that PyWikiBot doesn't have a real wiki text parser, although it uses something called MW parser from hell. It relies on a large number of regular expressions to decompose wiki texts. Um, on the pro side, a lot of people use this and they're fairly well tested, but on the con side, the wizard lurks here. Be, be careful. Um, MWBot is a newer framework. One of its distinguishing features is that it uses the Parsoid parser to allow you to do syntax-directed transformations on Wikitext in a more structured way. This is what the Rust code for reading a page looks like. And if you want to, call, to save the page, you call page.save. There are also, also methods to convert Wikitext to HTML and back powered by Parsoid. And because it uses a real parser, it is much less likely to run into the, the wizard problem. Um, there are also automated tools which are extensions uh, native to MediaWiki. These aren't used on any WMF wikis as far as I know, but they are used by third-party wikis. One is called replace text. This is what it would look like to replace a square bracket sequence with the equivalent with curly braces, um, simplified a bit. Um, and once you submit it, it, you can see the diff and it has a somewhat readable uh, description of what you did. Um, the mass edit regex. Uh, extension is almost identical to replace text on the user side, but it has different underlying technology choices, which makes it more compatible with most wikis. And this is the same search and replace. Um, and uh, it shows the proposed edit right there in a preview, which is quite nice. So we have some tools and we have communities which work hard on migrating content to allow us to continue innovating wiki text. How can we continue to improve this process? Some ideas here. Better communication, more robust automation that protects against the wizard, uh, perhaps more hybrid humans in the loop tools. I've heard from third party media wiki users that they would like even more automation, perhaps handling wiki text changes completely automatically when they do media wiki upgrades um, and they are less afraid of the wizard than we are on, um, on our WMF projects. So we've reached our final topic, the future of wiki text. I always like to, to, to give folks a, an idea of the sorts of things that um, that all this work is, is aiming to. This is all um, more or less speculative because the future is not the present. Uh, so, so take it with a grain of salt, but I wanted to, to leave you with some, some hope and some excitement. Um, to see the future, we start with the past and the present. As mentioned, Parzoid has been powering various tools in the background for 10 years now. This year, we started to roll out Parzoid for readers on article pages, first on our internal office wiki, then on discussion pages on Wikitech, and just last week for all pages in Hebrew and English wiki voyage. We're very excited about that. We expect to roll out Parzoid reviews for all wiki voyages this year, and then proceed with other wikis using our confidence framework to tell us when it's safe to do so. But again, the goal of content migration is to enable wiki text improvements. So what things might happen next once we've transitioned our wiki, all of our wikis to Parzoid and, in our, and are in a place where we can move forward again. So the next slides are all tentative and subject to change, but I wanted to leave you with a, at least a glimpse of possible futures. We've been working on better ways to escape arguments, which we call here doc syntax. The basic idea is to be able to quote arguments with these triple brackets, um, at, like you see on the, on the right. Um, this allows editors to more reliably write template arguments that might contain special wiki text characters like the, these vertical bars. Previously, editors have worked around these problems by, uh, by splitting up templates into separate parts like table start and table end here. Um, and uh, you may know there, there are other ways of working around it more or less um, obvious. With here doc arguments, we don't need to do any of that. The new syntax allows the vertical bars to be safely included as part of the argument as long as they're surrounded by the triple brackets. 
Here's a perhaps more realistic example from an old presentation by Brooke Bibber about block citations. The original idea here, Brooke's original idea was to wrap a larger section of text with a citation template to allow a more precise indication of exactly what part of the article is supported by a given citation. Do you see the problem with this wiki text? I can't hear you, so I'll, I'll give you a second to look. It's these. These two equal signs are special characters in wiki text and break the whole template. Using a here doc argument surrounding the thing with the, the triple bra bra uh, brackets fixes the problem. Um, so again, this is a summary. There's some details. What if you're, the thing you want to write actually includes those triple brackets? There's a way to deal with that. But the big idea here is to make it easy to move wiki text into template arguments because you don't have to worry as much about special characters breaking things. We also have a big picture goal to formalize and standardize the way that a page is put together from a collection of fragments, like templates or extension tags or parser functions. We'd like to think of the page as being composed of multiple independent fragments that are plugged together in a separate compose step. Each fragment needs to have an appropriate shape. A string containing a fragment of wiki text is quite difficult to compose, but an HTML DOM tree or forest is something that will hold its shape better in a variety of contexts. Those are the two types currently present in MediaWiki, but we'd like to consider other fragment types as well. And the reason is that that fragments frequently show up as arguments to other transclusions, and we know we have a quite rich informal type system for these, currently expressed through the template data extension. Rich types for fragment parameters also provide for good editor support, as we can provide the appropriate input widget for the type of the argument. These fragments can be independently cached so that if a page is edited, we can recompose it with the fragments we, we used earlier. And similarly, if a fragment is edited, it can be recomposed without reparsing the entire page. A related idea is to clean up the template system by separating the presentation from the data. We saw a step in that direction with the presentation of the new chart extensions in a talk yesterday, which pulled the, the graph data, the data that you're going to graph out of the body of the wiki text. Um, Marine at Wikibase Solution has proposed a new extension called Array Functions, which is an interesting step forward. I, I encourage folks to take a look at that. Um, to be clear, our movements in the direction of a modular page composition mechanism will be incremental, and we're presenting ideas here, not definite plans, but I want to give you a rough idea of the, the, the sort of direction we're, we're thinking. So in summary, what's the future for Wikitext? Again, the small bullets here are give, give a taste of possibilities, not anything definite. But the big ideas are syntax improvements to address editor pain points. And we want to hear from you about what can help you. Um, work on fragment composition, which should improve PARS efficiency, as well as creating new ways to author fragments of a page. And finally, ways to capture meaning from Wikitext that work across projects. Some possible mechanisms might include encoding meaningful information about template arguments using template data, um, so that the template data says this is an info box instead of trying to figure out um, through other means, and leveraging that information to better translate templates across projects or to localize the presentation of, of shared data generation functions. So the future is exciting, and we look forward to it. Um, I do think I have a minute or two for, for questions, hopefully. Thanks. Yeah, there are... <laughs>